we're going to tackle our uh, uppers. Uh, so chapter three, three deals with uppers. Maybe, there we go, okay. In 2008, 5.6 million Americans used cocaine or cocaine products. 1.4 million Americans used methamphetamines for non-medical purposes. 83 million Americans used a tobacco product in 2008. 166 million Americans drank coffee last year. Most of them drank it daily. Americans averaged 56 gallons of soft drinks per person in 2008, most of them caffeinated. That is 598 12-ounce cans or 359 20-ounce bottles of pop per person. In 2008, 200 million people use betel nut. They brew it and drink it like coffee, or they chew it and it turns their teeth black. In Southeast Asia, especially Thailand, the area is having a severe problem with a form of methamphetamine called yaba. In the area around the Horn of Africa, the majority of the male population and much of the female population chew cot, a mild stimulant. <clears throat> 1.3 billion people worldwide smoke cigarettes. Stimula uh, natural stimulants, coca, cocaine comes from the coca shrub. Nicotine comes from the tobacco plant. Cathinone comes from, from the cot bush. Uh, ephedrine comes from the ephedra bush. Uh, aracoline comes from betel nut. And caffeine comes from the coffee plant. Synthesized stimulants, methamphetamines, diet pills, meth methylphenidate, uh, another, uh, and the, uh, the uh, name for it is Ritalin. The uh, chemical name for it is methylphenidate, uh, methacathinone. Stimulants increase the activity in the central nervous system. It, they boost energy. They raise your heart rate and, they, and your blood pressure. They increase respiration. They reduce appetite. And they subdue your thirst. They may make the user more alert, more active, more confident, more anxious, more restless, and potentially more aggressive. Stimulants are used to treat narcolepsy, obesity, and ADHD. Stimulants work by affecting four neurotransmitters, epinephrine, which increases your energy, norepinephrine, which increases confidence, feelings of well-being, and motivation, Serotonin, which increases your energy, and dopamine, which also increases your energy. Most of the neurons affected by epinephrine and norepinephrine are located in an area of the midbrain called the locus ceruleus. This portion of the brain networks with uh, many parts of the rest of the brain. When the body needs an extra jolt of energy, epinephrine and norepinephrine are released to provide the energy. Uh, when the individual takes it, takes uppers, it uh, forces the release of the energy chemicals. Uh, these drugs cause the body to react to stress that doesn't exist and makes the individual talkative, hyperactive, and hypervigilant, kind of like Barney Fife. The stronger the stimulant, the longer it takes the body to recover. Uh, large quantities over long periods of time deplete the body's energy stores and leaves the body without reserves. Withdrawal from stimulants can create severe depression that can last for days, weeks, or months. People tend to build a fairly rapid <laughs> tolerance to the stimulant, forcing the individual to consume more and more of the substance. Even coffee <laughs> will require more and more with increased consumption. The reward reinforcement pathway is a natural structure that informs the individual of an activity or substance that supports survival. Hunger, hunger is satiated, thirst is satiated, sexual desire is satiated. When a strong stimulant is used, it overstimulates the reward reinforcement pathway, and the body doesn't respond to hunger, thirst, or sexual activity. The brain cannot be satisfied. And the reason I have the, a picture of, of this lady is because uh, this is her naturally, and this is her after she has taken a stimulant. As more and more of the stimulant is used, tolerance builds and the rush in stimulation diminishes. But what does remain is the emotional memory of the effects of the stimulant. This is accomplished by the dopamine stimulation in the reward reinforcement pathway. 
One of the side effects of long-term stimulant usage can be dehydration and malnourishment. The hypothalamus regulates thirst and hunger. Uh, stimulants fool this part of, of the brain to think that the individual is neither hungry or thirsty. Uh, this can lead to deficiencies of vitamins and minerals as well as damage to the teeth. And this is a lady uh, in 1995, and she was using um, crystal meth for the whole period. And here she is seven years later. She looks much older than seven years older than she does in this picture. Sean Wise, 20 years addicted, uh, addicted, two years sober. This is him when he was a mighty duck. Uh, this is him when he was pretty far down and out, and now here he is two years two years later uh, after being after sobering up. He was a cocaine addict for twenty years. Stimulants, including the weaker ones like nicotine and caffeine, uh, induce vascular spasms and constrict blood flow to organs and tissue. Heavy smokers will have a pasty complexion due to the restricted blood flow. This restricted blood flow will uh, slow tissue repair and the healing process. Chronic use of stimulants will weaken blood vessels, increasing the risk of stroke. But at least the stimulant user has increased confidence in stimulated feelings of euphoria. They are talkative, they, are, they tend to be restless, they tend to be irritable, they, it may give them insomnia, it may make them paranoid, it may make them aggressive, it may make them violent. Prolonged use of high doses of methamphetamine can lead to a clinical level of paranoia or kick the individual into psychosis. Meth increases the dopamine in the central nervous system. One of the conditions of schizophrenia is an overabundance of dopamine receptor sites. Sometimes the meth user will drift into permanent schizophrenia. Nicotine provides almost immediate tolerance. All stimulants in a slower but similar manner develop tolerance rapidly. Dependence is developed with tolerance uh, since the need to, uh, becomes greater and greater. Nicotine has the strongest dependence level. Cocaine is synthesized from the coca leaf. Since its introduction in South America with the invasion of Incas in Peru, it has enjoyed epidemics and lag periods. The first epidemic was at the end of the 19th century. The famous author Robert Louis Stevenson uh, wrote the novel uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in six days while taking cocaine as a treatment for tuberculosis. Many have speculated that the two personalities represented in the novel actually represented Stevenson on and off the stimulant. Stevenson may have written the novel to explain to friends his change of personality. Cocaine won't grow just anywhere like marijuana. Cocaine grows in the moderately high slopes of the Andes Mountains. Uh, Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, Colombia, some on the island of Java in uh, Indonesia. Coca leaves don't contain very much alkaloid cocaine. One acre of six to eight foot bushes will only produce 1.5 to 2 kilograms, uh, three to four and a half pounds. Cocaine refinement begins with stage one, soaking the leaves in alkali and water. Stage two of cocaine refinement is uh, where the workers in gasoline, uh, acetone, or kerosene uh, to create a paste. They add gasoline, acetone, or kerosene to create a paste. Stage three involves discarding the waste leaves and adding an acid, uh, such as hydrochloric or sulfuric acid. In stage four, the cocaine paste is mixed with lime and ammonia. The last stage is separating the cocaine hydrochloride from the paste. Smuggling cocaine into the United States has been a constant cat and mouse game between the smugglers and the DEA since the 1970s. What did I read in the paper? Oh, uh, about a week ago, they uh, um, captured uh, uh, 14 million dollars worth of cocaine. Uh, they were, it was in baby wipes uh, that were coming across the border. So that's how they found it anyway. 14 million dollars worth was a huge pile. 
During the Reagan administration, a friend of the president's was killed by smugglers to steal his yacht, and since then the military has been used to stop mass shipments coming in by plane and ship from South America. This is a submarine that was built to, uh, uh, to smuggle cocaine. Today there is only one sure route into the United States, and that is along the porous border with Mexico. Colombian drug cartels smuggle about two-thirds of their produce in this manner. Uh, the last third continues to come over by sea. Uh, North America consumes 40 to 50 percent of the world's cocaine. It is estimated that Americans spent $36.1 billion on cocaine in 2004. In 2019, the figure was $150 billion. Cocaine in the United States averages 84% purity, with uh, prices ranging from $12,000 uh, to $35,000 per kilogram, about 2.2 pounds. There are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. The street value of one gram of cocaine is $50, $50 to $200, with an average purity of about 57%. Crack cocaine comes in rocks of from uh, one-tenth of a gram to one-half a gram and sell for ten, $10 to $20 each rock. Hardcore cocaine users will spend an average of $186 per, per week on cocaine. Cocaine is, uh, uh, is actually cheaper than it ever has been. It is estimated that there are probably over 3 million hardcore cocaine users in the United States. The man to the left is pitchman Billy Mays, who OD'd on cocaine at age 51. How do you OD on cocaine? Usually, uh, you snort uh, cocaine. It's a vasoconstrictor. Uh, it constricts the blood vessels in your heart, and you have a heart attack when you die. I have a, let's see, what is this individual to me? It was my uh, niece's uh, husband. So he wasn't it really related to me. Anyway, he, uh, he OD'd on cocaine. Um, he and his wife uh, were regular meth users uh, from time to time. Uh, she got an inheritance of $20,000 from my, from my parents when they died, and uh, after my mother died. And uh, that $20,000, he decided he was going to try cocaine instead of instead of crystal meth. Uh, so he snorted cocaine uh, and died of a heart attack. Uh, and of course she claims that he only died of a heart attack, but the reality is, and it was fairly easy looking at him, uh, the kid was skinny as a minute, uh, shaved all of his hair because uh, people who uh, use crystal meth or snort cocaine, uh, their hair stands on end and, and it itches. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that they uh, that uh, people that use a lot of uh, meth or cocaine uh, they shave their heads, shave their heads, they shave their faces, they shave every, all the hair off their body in order uh, to not be irritated by it. Anyway, he, he died of a heart attack at 39. <clears throat> when the Spanish first arrived in South America, they found many people in the Andes Mountains chewing coca leaves. Most Incan users actually mix the juice with lime from ground shell or uh, ash to uh, accelerate the introduction of the alkaloid into the brain. Introduction occurs in three to five minutes. The conquistadores encourage use of coca to increase the productivity of their quiche workers. And of course, they were trying to get them to mine gold. They were looking for riches. In 1859, uh, Albert Newman isolated the active ingredient in coca leaves, cocaine hydrochloride. Isolated, this substance was 200 times more powerful by weight than the coca leaf. The drug was first used as an anesthetic and a medicine to treat depression, tuberculosis, gastric disorder, and asthma. Cocaine wine was popular in France and Italy in the late uh, 1860s. This ushered in the first modern cocaine epidemic as two glasses of wine delivered the same amount of cocaine as a line of coke. It took 15 to 30 minutes for the cocaine to take effect after ingesting it in this manner. 
By the 1880s, patented medicines and drinks began to appear laced with cocaine, opium, morphine, heroin, cannabis, and alcohol. Since no one really understood addiction or the real power of the supplements and their tonics, many people became addicted, especially women. People began introducing cocaine into their systems in new ways. Injecting intravenously introduces the drug into the system in 30 seconds. Snorting cocaine introduces a substance into the blood in two to five minutes. Snorting more cocaine is counterproductive, as the drug is a vasoconstrictor, so once introduced into the nasal passage, it slows the absorption of any new cocaine. As the cocaine wears off, the nasal passage opens back up, causing a runny and sniffling nose. Smoking, cocaine-laced cigarettes were introduced in 1914, but the high temperature of the cigarette destroyed most of the psychoactive substance. Because cocaine is a natural substance, it tends to be metabolized very quickly, and its effects dissipate much faster than synthetic stimulants. Uh, the half-life of cocaine is 30 to 90 minutes, and is detectable in the urine for up to 36 hours after ingestion. Cocaine is used as a topical anesthetic because of its powerful vasoconstriction capabilities. Since cocaine receptors are found in the smooth muscles of the lungs, cocaine use will cause the bronchii to dilate. Synthetic cocaine produ products mimic the effect of cocaine for eye, dental, and cutaneous surgery. Uh, surgeries, and this is uh, lidocaine, procaine, xylocaine, and novocaine. I'm sure if you've had any dental work done, you are very much aware of what Novocaine does. Cocaine excites the user by blocking the reuptake of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. The abundance of these neurotransmitters gives the individual a feeling of well-being, mastery, omnipotence, euphoria, and general excitement. Cocaine metabolizes fairly rapidly, leaving the four neurotransmitters vulnerable to reuptake when the cocaine is gone. Cocaine's positive effects disappear fairly suddenly after 5 or 10 minutes. This abs absence of the previous feelings is referred to as the crash and may last for hours, days, or even weeks. Cocaine overstimulates the release of dopamine. If this occurs over time, it triggers the fright uh, center in the brain, causing paranoia. Cocaine also overstimulates the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine. If this occurs over time, the individual may suffer from lethargy, low blood pressure, and anhedonia, the inability to feel pleasure. Cocaine causes the overstimulation of serotonin, which not only makes the individual happy, but increases sexual activity as well. If this continues to happen over time, the individual may suffer from insomnia, agitation, and severe emotional depression. Cocaine blocks the metabolism of acetylcholine, increasing alertness, memory, and aggression. If overstimulation occurs over time, the person may suffer from tremors, memory lapses, mental confusion, and possibly hallucinations. Some people actually use cocaine as an aphrodisiac, since at low doses it enhances sexual desire and prolongs ejaculation. However, in some cases it causes spontaneous ejaculation. In higher doses and with chronic use, cocaine may cause erectile dysfunction, and a disinterest in sex. The lack of sexual need may lead to high-risk sexual behavior and unusual sexual practices since sexual need no longer exists for the individual. For cocaine users who are prone to violence, cocaine makes them more aggressive and violent because inhibitory functions are suppressed in the cingulate gyrus and the temporal lobes. Emotional triggers are overstimulated in, in the amygdala. The fright center is hyperactivated in the limbic system. When cocaine is combined with alcohol, the result is a substance called cocaethylene, which uh, causes increased agitation, euphoria, and violence. In one study of domestic violence, all the perpetrators had used alcohol on the day of the violence, and 67% had used cocaine with the alcohol. Cocaethylene is also more likely to induce heart conduction anomalies that may lead to a heart attack. This substance has a half-life three times that of cocaine and therefore can cause prolonged high blood pressure. While the brain gains feelings of euphoria and well-being from cocaine, 
the heart is being abused by the substance. Cocaine causes the heart rate to increase and the blood vessels to constrict, raising blood pressure 20 to 30 units. Small muscle repair stops during use. The stress on the heart and the muscle damage being done by its use can cause damage to the heart muscle, coronary arteries, and other blood vessels of the heart. Prolonged high blood pressure weakens blood vessel walls in the brain, leading to stroke. Cocaine also causes a curious condition where calcium and fat deposits collect in blood vessels, causing heart attacks or stroke. Cocaine crosses a placental barrier, meaning that when mom uses, her fetus uses also within seconds. Da damage is done to the fetus blood vessels and si a similar reaction to that of the mother and may result in miscarriage, stroke, placental separation, or SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. One study looking at 717 babies born to cocaine using mothers found that they were born on an average 1.2 weeks early, 1.2 pounds lighter, one inch shorter, a head that is three quarters of an inch smaller in circumference. The babies are born agitated, irritable, with high blood pressure. Uh, the baby is usually malnourished because that is the lifestyle of the cocaine and amphetamine user. Escaping from cocaine-soaked placental environment does not remove the child from danger. Stimulant users are often inattentive and uncaring about the needs of others, and this includes their infant, uh, which results in emotional deprivation for the child, neglect of the child, bonding problems. Studies show that rates of mental delays are double among stimulant-exposed children. All is not bleak. With concentrated postnatal care, these infants catch up with their peers by toddlerhood. Tolerance of the euphoric effect begins with the first usage of cocaine. Increased usage has been seen of 25 times the level within days. This is due to the adaptation of the brain to dopamine stimulation in the nucleus accumbens. Tolerance is to the euphoric effect only, since paranoia increases, as does cardiovascular effects. Withdrawal from cocaine use is very real, despite the misperceptions of researchers into the 1990s. All the crash symptoms become accentuated and prolonged depending on the uh, dosage used, frequency of use, and the length of use. Anhedonia, lack of energy, emotional depression, loss of motivation, anxiety, vivid and un unpleasant dreams, insomnia, increased appetite, psychomotor agitation, intense craving for the, d the drug. Cycle of quitting and relapse at la well, a relapse of stimulants. I think I need a drink. Uh, after a binge session with the drug, the individual crashes, sleeps for a prolonged period, awakens with renewed energy, and swears off of the drug forever. The indiv individual feels better for a few days and begins to feel as they did before they began using the drug. Seven to ten days after quitting, the craving starts to build, energy levels drop, Emotional depression sets in as they find no pleasure in their surroundings. After a couple of weeks or a month, they relapse, not being able to deal with the depression or the ever-increasing craving. While co cocaine overdoses are common, because of the rapid metabolization, the effects are rarely fatal. In large city emergency rooms in 2004, 41% of the visits were due to cocaine usage, most because the individual felt as if they were dying. The U.S. averages between two to 3,000 stimulant deaths every year, either from the initial stimulatory stage that causes seizures, hypertension, hyperthermia, stroke, or tachycardia, or later uh, with the depression uh, stage from the extreme respiratory depression and coma. Some people will experience inverse tolerance where they become more sensitive to cocaine's effects, Tachycardia means a heart, a fast heart rate. Long-term cocaine or amphetamine use may lead to tactile hallucinations called formications, the sensation that tiny bugs are crawling on the user's skin. The user will sometimes scratch themselves bloody, trying to rid themselves of the imaginary pests. And what's the problem? The problem is that, that, uh, that your hair follicles are standing on end. And that's why it feels like something's crawling around on you. Cocaine and amphetamine usage may also cause dental problems for the user. 
This is usually caused from poor nutrition, poor dental hygiene, and the acidic effects of the drug. The individual also tends to suffer dehydration that causes the gums to recede. Seizures are sometimes caused by excessive cocaine or amphetamine usage. 2-10% to uh, 10 of cocaine users will have seizures, three times more women than men. Cocaine and amphetamine users can sometimes suffer from gastrointestinal problems, gastric ulcers, retroperitoneal fibrosis, uh, visceral infarction, intestinal ischemia, uh, gastrointestinal tract perforation, colonic ischemia. Ischemia means uh, stroke uh, or blood clot, uh, peritoneal, uh, retroperitoneal fibrosis means a hardening of the, of the peritoneum. Uh, none of these is good. Infarction means death. So viscera, your viscera is uh, your uh, uh, intestines. Uh, infarction means death, so it's a uh, death of, of your viscera. Uh, it's usually localized, so but this can be a really serious problem. Um, if, if something happens in that area, if you get punched in that area, it may open up and, and uh, the uh, uh, contents of your, of your uh, uh, intestines will come out, will leak out. Another possible side effect of cocaine usage comes from dopamine changes in the cerebellum from cocaine or amphetamine toxicity. The individual suffers from involuntary writhing, flailing, jerking, or sinuous movements of the arms and legs. This is sometimes referred to as meth or crack dancing, and I have a video that shows you that. Yes. What we have is a claim by the plaintiff that the defendant is obligated to her for failure to pay back rentals, utilities, and also for the cost of a, what is this, DNA paternity test that the two of them engaged in. Apparently, the two of them have taken the test and directed that it be furnished to me for my inspection with whomever well, in other words, if he's not the father, then she pays. If he is the father, she uh, gets paid. She'll be paying. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Don't, don't get in here. That out. ain't bad. Don't get in here. Show out. Well, yeah. yes. I, I I'm, I'm just, not going to try it in the court. Mm -hmm. Well, just, just chill just a little yes, bit. Sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Your Honor. <laughs> Judge Joe Brown. You know how to act better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stop. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to show out. Uh, would you stop? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll try not. Can you hold still, or are you under the influence? Um, under the influence. Hey. Under the influence. Not right now. Under the influence. But that woman down, <laughs> she done drove me down influence a lot of things that I said I'd never do. He gonna lie. Don't oh, he how gonna can lie. I? Take when it's the truth. Mind. God knows. Oh, God. <laughs> I wouldn't bring him in, do it. Hey, you please. Man. How would you take care of them if officially you're unemployed? What's Thank you. I wasn't unemployed then. You were unemployed. I wasn't unemployed then. Yes, you were. But I was selling no. Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. Oh. He was. He was. Now, he was doing that. But he was He was receiving his daughter's Social Security check for her mother's death. Oh, and he wasn't giving me none like that. Excuse Everybody, me. Excuse, excuse me. Were you... Let, let him go. Let him, I'm let, going. Let, I'm going to tell the truth. Let him tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. <laughs> Okay, just, just my Miss own, let, let him go. I have a purpose. <laughs> You're showing a classic example. All that kinetic I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Too much energy just, you know, I'm sorry, you but you know, it's just hard on me when someone says something. You're showing the something. residual effects from, so you've already said that you were moving merchandise. I was, I was, I'm not lying, I'm not denying. I'm not, I'm, still, I'm here to tell the truth. Not, didn't I say, uh, didn't I raise my right hand? <laughs> I don't care who hit the truth. The only one can <laughs> condemn me is God. But, Your Honor, you, uh, might you get may get a, uh, a little... Okay. Well, that was crack dancing. Um, you saw that he couldn't stop moving, and uh, that's uh, what uh, the judge was referring to as kinetic energy. He couldn't stop moving. Schizophrenia is caused from too much dopamine in the mesolimbic pathway. It is normally caused by a hereditary imbalance or disease state that affects this area. Since cocaine and amphetamines increase dopamine in this area, it can trigger stimulant-induced paranoid schizophrenia. The main effects are auditory, visual, or tactile hallucinations, 
and paranoid delusions. Stimulant-induced psychosis is impossible to differentiate from organic psychosis. Psychotic symptoms may disappear with abstinence, but it may take hours, days, or even months. One-third to one-half of chronic cocaine users will develop mild transient paranoia. With repeated use after a psychotic episode, smaller and smaller doses will trigger psychotic episodes. Polydrug use is very common among cocaine users because of the individual because the individual may need chemical assistance to come down off their stimulation. The most common drugs used with cocaine are alcohol, heroin, sedative hypnotics, nicotine, a person who smokes cigarettes is 22 times more likely to use cocaine than a non-smoker. While the purity of cocaine coming into the country averages 80, not 80 to 90 percent, most marketed uh, cocaine has been cut with substances to increase profits. Uh, baby laxatives, lactose, uh, vitamin B, aspirin, mannitol, sugar, uh, te tetracaine, or procaine are used to cut the cocaine. Injecting any drug is dangerous, but injecting street drugs is especially so. The user can never be sure of the purity of the drug. The drug may be contaminated with dangerous substances that are not meant to be introduced into the human body. Bacteria and viruses may be introduced. 50 to 90 percent of IV drug users are infected with hepatitis C from using contaminated needles. Manufacturers and refiners of cocaine have known that in the path of the base uh, or free base state, Cocaine could be smoked without destroying the euphoric properties. When freebase is mixed, mixed with marijuana and smoked, it is called, uh, referred to as bazooko, bazooka, uh, bas, bazooko, or pasta. Uh, this form of ingestion gives the user a more intense and immediate effect than snorting. Cracker freebase has four properties that make it a sought commodity. The melting point is higher, 195 degrees, as compared to the powder, which is 98 degrees. It reaches the brain faster when smoked. This form is more readily absorbed by the fat cells in the brain, giving, a, giving it a more intense reaction. Higher doses of cocaine can be ingested in a shorter period of time. Any smoked cocaine product will produce a more intense effect than snorted cocaine. This is true even though most of the cocaine pro product is lost in the air. 75% in a pipe and 50% in a cigarette. Hence, more cocaine has to be smoked to get a stronger effect. Even when cocaine is smoked or injected, the drug is metabolized rapidly in 15 to 20 minutes and must be renewed to get a stronger effect. Crack gives a rush that only lasts a few seconds and euphoria and excitation that only lasts a few minutes, 5 to 20. As soon as the effect dissipates, the individual feels irritable, dysphoric, uh, which is another name for uneasy, uh, anxious. Uh, for this reason, crack is almost always smoked in a binge pattern. Crack does have some fairly unpleasant side effects. Thirst, coughing, tremors, dry skin, slurred speech, blurred vision, crack keratitis, uh, abrasion of the eye, Crack thumb hands, burns on hands and callus on thumb from lighting a crack pipe, and crack burns, facial burns from lighting the pipe. Psychological side effects of crack, uh, smoking crack, paranoia, craving for the drug, asocial behavior, attention problems, irritability, drug dreams, uh, hyperexcitability, visual and auditory hallucinations, depression, cocaine psychosis, high-risk sexual behavior. Respiratory side effects from smoking crack, chest pains, pneumonia, coughs, crack lung, uh, decreased ability to diffuse CO2, hemorrhage, uh, respiratory failure, death due to anesthetization of the respiratory center in the medulla. Crack or free base can be mixed with marijuana to create caviar, champagne, grimmies, fry daddies, coca puffs, uh, hubba or woolies, that's the name for crack and free or free base. Users may combine crack with PCP or ketamine to make space basing, quack, tragic magic. Mixing crack with tar heroin creates speed balls, hot rocks, belushi rocks. And the reason it's called belushi rocks, 
uh, is because uh, Jim John Belushi uh, was uh, overdosed on uh, cocaine and heroin. And that's why they call it Belushi Rocks. Uh, when crack or cocaine is mixed with wine, it is called crack coolers. In 2004, 4,500 deaths occurred from the direct or indirect effects of cocaine. Cocaine overdose doesn't always kill, but results in tachycardia and hyperventilation accompanied by a feeling of impending death. Death usually results from cardiac arrest, seizure, stroke, respiratory failure, hyperthermia. Social consequences, because using crack can lead to risky sexual behavior, children are sometimes produced in circumstances that are not optimum. Crack smokers have social problems, and they don't relate to their own offspring any better. Crack smokers show high rates of neglect, abandonment, abuse of their children. There are high rates of single and no-parent families. Women willing to trade sex for crack are very common, and then it starts all over again. Uh, so they, uh, they are also willing to sell their children for sex, uh, for uh, crack. Uh, they don't care what you're going to do with the kids. They sell them for sexual purposes. And this has been known to happen on, on, uh, on the reservation, on your reservation. This happens all over the place. Any place crack is, uh, is, is around, uh, people will sell their children uh, for anything. Uh, just to get another fix. And this, as I said, this has happened on the uh, Navajo Nation. The physical and mental effects of cocaine and amphetamines are similar. Cocaine is about twice as expensive. Cocaine gives a greater rush and more intense high than amphetamines, but amphetamines allow for more prolonged energy. Amphetamines effect, la effect lasts six to nine times longer. Amphetamines are more likely to cause addiction. Amphetamines are synthetic stimulants that provide similar effects as cocaine, but cheaper and more prolonged. Amphetamines are called upper speed crack crystal ice shabu or glass. I was uh, in the uh, um, I was working in medicine before um, cocaine was coming into the United States on Moss. Uh, there were still amphetamines out there, and it was referred to as speed, of course, and so we had speed freaks, uh, and then, of course, uh, cocaine started coming across the border, uh, stronger dosages of, uh, of uh, amphetamines were, were out there, uh, so we started hearing all of these different names, uh, speed, crack, crystal, uh, crystal is crystal meth, uh, ice, shabu, glass, these are all different names for different types of amphetamines. Amphetamines are snorted, they are injected, uh, they are ingested orally. Worldwide, 33 million people used amphetamines and methamphetamines in 2003. Speed used uh, to come in several forms, amphetamines, uh, crosstops, white crosses, and cartwheels, uh, biphetamine, uh, black beauties, uh, dexedrine, dexies or beans, uh, benzedrine, bennies, uh, methadrine. These are all names for all of these things. Um, once upon a time, I was married to a young lady who decided she wanted to. She didn't want. She didn't want to raise kids. That's no fun. So she uh, uh, took off, and uh, she uh, she started working in a truck stop at a truck stop. And while she was there. Uh, somebody asked her if she would start marketing their their amphetamines, uh, and she did. And of course, uh, one horrible thing led to an, led to another. Uh, the police got on to her uh, selling uh, drugs, and they tried to get her to tell them who her supplier was. Uh, she wouldn't do it, and she came back to me. Uh, she ran back to me. <laughs> I was in the service at the time. I was living about 1,500 miles away. I was in Lubbock, Texas, and uh, she got on a bus and she left the state. Uh, it was a, a state investigation, so it's not like she was, uh, she couldn't go back home, actually, was what the problem was. So uh, they were trying to figure out who her supplier was, and she came back saying that, oh, my, I, I, I missed the kids so much. I missed you so much. 
of the day. Anyway, so that's when she got there, she had a whole sack of, of, of pills. And she said, that's that's a thousand dollars worth of pills. And she also had a baggie full of a baggie. It should have been a garbage bag full of marijuana. Uh, I threw them all away because I was in the service at the time and it we had been caught with it. It wouldn't really have mattered that it was her stuff. It would have, you know, I would have gotten in trouble too. So I, I threw away about two thousand dollars worth of of uh, speed and uh, marijuana to stay out of trouble. She couldn't understand that. Anyway, uh, it didn't last very long. She fairly quickly she took off with somebody else because I'm not. I'm boring. I'm really really boring, and that's probably closer to true than you need to know. Amphetamines were first synthesized in 1887. It was uh, used by both sides during World War II. I think I told you that my dad uh, drove uh, ammunition trucks. Uh, before he joined the military, they gave him amphetamines to use so that he could drive through the night. Um, he thought he could do it with uh, caffeine. Uh, and he, d he really did doesn't have any problems staying awake, so that wasn't a problem as far as he was concerned. Uh, but other individuals used uh, amphetamines. Uh, it was supplied to all the troops uh, during uh, World War II. Uh, some people got hooked on it, uh, most of them. There, there, it wasn't a constant supply, uh, but uh, he was uh, behind the lines. And, uh, you know, they had to keep, he was uh, working, he was running a telephone exchange, so that had to stay open 24-7. Um, so, you know, they had access to all this stuff. He never used it, but uh, there were people that did, that needed it. He uh, seemed to have the ability to stay awake without any artificial stimulation. It was used as a diet pill in the 1950s and 1960s. The hippies fueled their psychedelic experience with street speed, marijuana, and LSD. Amphetamines became a Schedule II drug in 1970. Street chemists began producing crank, uh, crank uh, methamphetamine sulfate, and crystal methamphetamine hydrochloride in the 1980s and 1990s. These chemists were able to convert uh, the active ingredients in cold medications, phenylpropanolamine, uh, ephedrine, and pseudoephedrine into crank and crystal. In the 1990s, a new, stronger methamphetamine began to be produced called Ice Glass Batu and Shabu, uh, dextroisomer methamphetamine. Uh, this form later came to be known as Crystal Meth, uh, Tina, Peanut Butter, Deadhead, uh, Chalk, Tweak, Yellow Rock, uh, Glass, and Rose Quartz Speed. One of the jobs I had when I was in the military was collecting drug urines on people. Uh, yeah, I was a narc when I was in the military. But I was a medical person, and uh, that was my job, uh, was uh, detecting this stuff in people uh, to get them off the flight line. You know, you didn't want, you didn't want a, a deadhead uh, uh, fixing your airplane. It might, not, it might be fixed, and it might not. Uh, this is really, really serious stuff when you're talking about a, uh, uh, a military situation. The profile of the typical methamphetamine user is white male, 19 to 40, in the West, and especially Hawaii, an equal number of women abuse the drug as men. Meth is particularly rampant in the gay community, where it is the third most popular drug after alcohol and marijuana. Amphetamines can be cooked in laboratory facilities. Initially, biker gangs cooked the, dr the drugs, the Hells Angels and, Gypsy, and the Gypsy Jokers, especially Hells Angels. Uh, recently, Mexican gangs have taken over the manufacture. Uh, the DEA estimates that there are over 300 ways to manufacture uh, methamphetamine from pseudoephedrine, and for this reason, cold medicine has been controlled and put behind the counter. Snorting methamphetamine is more toxic to the nasal mucosa than snorting cocaine and may cause irritation and pain. The most intense high comes from injecting uh, amphetamines directly into the bloodstream, Sclerosis and pain often result from the injection. Methamphetamine is extremely bitter and takes much longer to get effect, uh, get the effect uh, to the brain. Amphetamines last four to six hours as compared to 10 to 90 minutes for cocaine. Amphetamines force the increase of neurotransmitters, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine because it forces the release of these neurotransmitters from terminal vesicles 
it reverses the reabsorption pumps, forcing more neurotransmitters into the synapse. It, and enzymes that metabolize the neurotransmitters are blocked by amphetamines. Sorry, I needed a drink. <clears throat> Prolonged use of amphetamines reduce the body's ability to produce the affected neurotransmitters. Research shows norepinephrine uh, reduction as long as six months after drug use has, uh, has ceased. Uh, research also shows a 24% reduction in dopamine resulting in difficulty feeling pleasure. Thus, after heavy use for the individual to feel normal, they have to use the drug. Methamphetamine also causes a degeneration of serotonin producing cells. Degeneration means they go away. Which means for the rest of your life, you're not going to be able to feel as much pleasure as you would if you just stayed clean. Research uh, of methamphetamine users found that they had an 11.3% reduction in gray matter of their hippocampus, their cingulate gyrus, their paralimbic cortices. These areas affect craving, mood, emotions, and memory. However, brain on methamphetamines are actually larger due to swelling. It causes the brain to swell. Amphetamines cause increased energy, increased heart rate, raised body temperature, rapid respiration, high blood pressure, dilation of bronchial vessels, appetite suppression. Binging on amphetamines can result in not sleeping for 3 to 10 days. Tolerance of amphetamine is fairly rapid and extreme. A normal dosage is 15 to 30 milligrams. Long-term users may use as much as 5,000 milligrams a day. Effects on these individuals, sleep deprivation, of course, heart toxicity, blood vessel toxicity, severe, severe malnutrition. Overdose may result in convulsions, hyperthermia, cardiovascular collapse. Unlike most drugs, amphetamines are abused as much or more by women than men. This may lead to use during pregnancy, which results in irritable baby syndrome, intolerance to light and touch, tremors, muscle coordination problems, abnormal reflexes, sucking and swallowing problems, disturbed sleep. Other problems that might occur for a baby born to a methamphetamine user is premature delivery, congenital deformities such as club foot or limb abnormalities, gastric problems, intestines protruding into the stomach, placental separation and hemorrhage being potentially lethal to both mother and baby, intrauterine uh, brain hemorrhage and stroke, HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. If the baby survives gestation, they may have developmental problems, growth and developmental delays, learning disabilities, increased incidence of ADHD, increased risk for rage disorder, greater incidence of, SI, uh, of SIDS. Disability rates range around 33%. Uh, what was I one going to say? Oh, I've seen more malformations in uh, cocaine. This was back in the 80s when cocaine first started being popular. Um, I was working at the time in uh, Children's Hospital in Omaha, which is uh, connected to Methodist Hospital in Omaha. Anyway, I was working there and uh, cocaine had just become popular, um, especially with the very wealthy. Uh, so we were seeing a lot of uh, babies being born uh, as cocaine addicts. We were also seeing a lot of abnormal forms. Congenital uh, deformities, not not just club foot or limb abnormalities. We saw we saw one baby born with his heart on the outside of his body, which wow, that was that was a mess. Um, we had a baby that was born without a skull. Uh, a lot of really strange problems that nobody had ever seen before, and it was really heart wrenching uh, for the people working with these babies. Uh, really kind of a sad, sad situation. Um, you can't really live with a, without a skull. That's not something. Anyway, ugly stuff. Uh, real silly to do these things. Amphetamines produce mild intense euphoria, alertness, sexual feelings, sense of well-being, and confidence. After prolonged use, irritability, paranoia, anxiety, aggression, mental confusion, poor judgment, 
impaired memory hallucinations. Since amphetamines cause an abundance of neurotransmitters that mimic sexual gratification, using the drug becomes a substitute for sexual activity. Amphetamines will also produce violence in people prone to violence because the drug causes people to be suspicious, paranoid, and overconfident. This proclivity for violence among meth users can lead to child abuse and neglect. In Oregon in 2004, 1,850 meth labs were busted and a full 80% of the child abuse and neglect cases involved meth users. Excessive amphetamine usage can lead to amphetamine psychosis, just as with cocaine. Excuse me. Hallucinations, loss of contact with reality, speech patterns that are, in, are indistinguishable from paranoid schizophrenia. Since these symptoms are caused by excess dopamine released by the drug, psychotic episodes can be induced at fairly low doses in individuals prone to excess dopamine. Some individuals may have immediate psychosis, while others may use for years with no problem. Crystal meth seems to have the strongest effect on the brain chemistry, and since it has several cardiovascular effects, can be smoked in larger quantities. The result is more severe. Paranoia, hallucinations, hypervigilant uh, thinking, suicidal depression, addictive use. 9.4% of children uh, 2 to 17 in the United States have been diagnosed with ADHD in their lifetime. 8.1% of U.S. adults between 18 and 44 have been diagnosed with ADHD. 129,000 children worldwide, 7.2%, have been diagnosed with ADHD. In 2016, 6,100,000 children have been diagnosed with ADHD from 4,400,000 4, uh, 4, in 2003, and this, of course, is in the United States. ADHD is caused by a depletion of dopamine. Amphetamines are used to treat ADHD because they increase dopamine and block its metabolism. Uh, phenyl, uh, methylphenidate, uh, also known as Ritalin, has 10 million prescriptions per year. Uh, D-amphetamine uh, is Adderall, 7.7. Uh, million prescriptions. Adomexetine, Stratera, uh, 5.8 million uh, prescriptions per year. And Pimeline, uh, we don't have any figures on, and that's Silert. Uh, amphetamines work on ADHD about 75% of the time. Research shows that children taking amphetamine therapy for ADHD in the long term have an increased risk of alcohol and drug abuse as adults. Half of children with ADHD have comorbid ODD, oppositional defiant disorder. If left untreated, these individuals are more likely to progress to more serious problems, such as stealing, vandalism, and arson. One of the main uses for amphetamines throughout the 20th century has been as a diet pill. But every time a new drug hit the market, it seemed to cause its own set of problems. One such problem came with the two amphetamines, fin, uh, fentermine and fenfluramine, uh, marketed as fenfen. Given in tandem, the drugs caused heart valve damage in select women. In 1999, the drugs were taken off the market. Stimulants are and have been used all over the world for centuries. Cot uh, is used in the Middle East, betel nut in the Far East and Asia, yohimbi in Africa, and ephedra in uh, the Mediterranean area. Cod is a mild stimulant found in the Middle East. Smuggling of this drug in the United States has become more prevalent as more and more immigrants from the area come into the United States. The key stimulant in the leaf is cathinone, which evaporates if the leaf isn't used within 48 hours after harvesting. This substance is said to produce an effect between caffeine and methamphetamine. Methcathinone is a synthetic version of cathinone. This drug is used extensively in the Horn of Africa and on the Arabian Peninsula. In Yemen, half the population uses cot, and a family may spend one-third of their income on the drug. This drug is uh, the driving force of the economies of many of the countries in the area. Uh, the drug is used socially. Uh, chronic cot use can cause physical exhaustion and suicidal depression when withdrawn. Synthetic cathinone is known as methcathinone. Uh, while this is only found sparingly in the United States, 
It is much more common in Europe and, in fact, represents 20% of the illicit drug use in the Russian Republic. Methcathinone is much more intense than COT and is as addictive as meth, uh, methamphetamine. With this drug, there is more dopamine reduction, and so Parkinsonism is more common. Parkinsonism has to do with tremors and uh, 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 difficulty walking. Beetle nuts come from the beetle nut palm and are found all over southern Asia. It is used extensively in India, Pakistan, the Arab world, Taiwan, Malaysia, the Philippines, New Guinea, Polynesia, southern China, and Africa. And I saw it in Vietnam. Worldwide, 200 to 450 million people use the substance. In Taiwan, 17% of men and 1% of women use the substance. One recent controversy in Taiwan is the beetle nut beauties who man beetle nut kiosks while dressed provocatively to attract male customers. Some authorities are demanding more modesty for fear of compromising public morals. And that is on Taiwan. The active ingredient in beetle nuts is aracoline, which induces an increase of epinephrine and norepinephrine in the central nervous system. This causes a mild euphoria, excitation, and a decrease of fatigue. The juice of the nut is dark red and stains the mouth red to black. Uh, aracoline and uh, muscarine are fairly toxic and cause mouth and esophagus irritation that might lead to cancer in the area. 7% of chronic users develop a cancer. In India, beetle nuts are mixed with sweetened tobacco to make a product known as gutka. Yohimbine is the extract from the yohimbi tree found in Africa. The tree is a member of the coffee family, and the extract is bitter and spicy and often brewed in a similar manner as coffee. The active ingredient in yohimbine is an alpha-2 adrenergic antagonist that increases the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. Yohimbine has been used for centuries as a mild aphrodisiac and a sexual rejuvenator. Yohimbine's sexual side effects seem to stem from its ability to increase penile blood flow. It has been used to treat erectile dysfunction and is reputed to induce sexual arousal in women. The drug does increase blood pressure and heart rate. Male enhancement products include male performance, Yohimbi power, manpower, and aphrodine. It is also found in Sobe Energy. Yohimbine serves as a local anesthetic. In larger doses, it may produce a mild euphoria and sometimes hallucinations. At toxic levels, it can produce paralysis of the respiratory system and death. Ephedra is a bush that grows in deserts all over the world. The drug that it produces is ephedrine. This drug is a mild to moderate stimulant that is used medicinally to treat asthma, narcolepsy, uh, allergies, and low blood pressure. Ephedrine is also known as marwif and mahuang and has been used medicinally by the Chinese for 5,000 years. Ephedrine was first synthesized in 1885 and for decades was the only effective treatment for asthma. Ephedrine's effects are less severe than amphetamines, though a toxic level is more likely to lead to psychosis. Ephedrine and pseudoephedrine are the active ingredients in many cold products. They also make up the molecule that is converted to make methamphetamine and methcathinone. This substance has also been implicated in sports doping scandals and so is banned by the NFL and illegal in Ohio. The sale of cold remedies is now controlled to prevent prevent the hoarding of enough of the substance to convert into the more destructive drugs. Caffeine is the most popular stimulant in the world, mood-altering drug in the world, and habit-forming drug in the world. 85% of the people in the United States consume substantial amounts of caffeine every day, and I drink Mountain Dew, and it's got lots of caffeine in it. But I'm not sensitive to caffeine. We'll talk about that in a minute. Caffeine is naturally found in coffee, tea, and chocolate. Caffeine is put in many products to give us energy in soda pop, energy drinks, and over-the-counter energy supplements. Water is the most widely consumed beverage in the world. Tea is the second most widely consumed beverage. Tea has been consumed in China for 4,700 years. 
Tea has been ritualized in many cultures like Japan and China. The English discovered tea from Portuguese traders and the country became obsessed with it. To this day, 4 o'clock p.m. is tea time in England when everyone stops and takes a spot of tea. Coffee was first cultivated in Ethiopia in 650 AD and from there slowly spread into a Europe. Though along the way, many cultures banned it as an intoxicant. In the United States, each coffee drinker consumes an average of 20 pounds of coffee a year. Eight ounces of brewed coffee will deliver about 135 milligrams of caffeine. Eight ounces of instant coffee will deliver about 95 milligrams of caffeine. Eight ounces of decaf coffee will deliver about seven milligrams of caffeine. Archaeological evidence indicates that indigenous people in Central America brewed coca products as early as 2,600 years ago. From the Mayans, the practice spread to the rest of the South and Central American power brokers, the Aztecs, and the Incans. Uh, cocoa was originally marketed in Europe as an aphrodisiac, but soon became merely candy. Cocoa has a small amount of caffeine, but other active ingredients in the substance act as stimulants as well, and one of them is theobromine. In the late 19th and early 20th century, manufacturers of cola soft drinks replaced cocaine with caffeine as an energy booster. Some of the caffeine uh, comes from the cola nut from the African cola tree, but most of it today comes from caffeine removed from decaffeinated coffee. Energy drinks began with the invention of Red Bull in 1987. Now you may think, oh, geez, that was so long ago. 1987, I was uh, 38 in 1987. Uh, Red Bull delivers 80 milligrams of, of caffeine in an 8.3 ounce can. Uh, Red Bull also contains taurine, ginseng, guarana, uh, glucose, B-complex vitamins, minerals, and carbohydrates. Eight ounces of brewed coffee delivers 135 milligrams of caffeine. 8.3 ounces of, of Red Bull delivers 80. Sobe Adrenaline Rush also delivers 80 milligrams of caffeine in an 8.3 ounce can. <clears throat> Starbucks two, uh, uh, two times shot delivers a whopping 105 milligrams of caffeine in just a 6.5 ounce can. 12 ounces of Mountain Dew delivers 54 milligrams of caffeine. 12 ounces of Dr. Pepper delivers 41 milligrams of caffeine. 12 ounces of Pepsi Cola delivers 38 milligrams of caffeine. 12 ounces of Coca Cola delivers 35 milligrams of caffeine. 16 ounces of Rockstar delivers 240 milligrams of caffeine. 116 ounces of full throttle delivers 200 milligrams of caffeine. 16 ounces of Monster delivers 160 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, 16 ounces of Mountain Dew Kickstart delivers 90 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, a new phenomenon that has hit the bar scene is to drink vodka mixed with Red Bull. This is known as Birch. It is reputed that this mixture will slow the process of getting drunk and results in less of a hangover the next morning. Uh, that is the opposite of what is true. <laughs> it gets you drunk faster, and uh, the hangover is about the same. Uh, not that I've ever experienced it. Uh, my son was a bartender, and he mixed a lot of this stuff in, uh, uh, when he was working in a bar in California, in, in Hollywood, actually. Uh, and he said, ah, that's, that's nonsense. Deaths due to overconsumption of Red Bull have led to banning the drink in several countries. France, Denmark, and Canada. Red Bull is not legal. Guarana is a natural drink of, of Brazil. Guarana comes from the Guarana shrub, which produces beans that have about two times the caffeine as coffee beans. The Brazilian drink normally delivers about 30 milligrams of caffeine in a 12-ounce can. Mate is a plant whose leaves are brewed like tea. Mate is the national drink of Argentina and delivers between 35 and 130 milligrams of caffeine per 8-ounce serving. 
3% of the world's caffeine comes from mate. Caffeine is a very bitter chemical. It's an alkaloid in a class of chemicals called xanthines. It is found in more than 60 plants around the world. The half-life of caffeine is 3 to 7 hours. It takes 15 to 35 hours for caffeine to clear the system. Swedes average 425 milligrams of caffeine per day. The English, English average 445 milligrams of caffeine per day. Americans average 211 milligrams of caffeine a day. 17% is from tea, 16% from soft drinks, 60% is from coffee. About half of all Americans drink 3.3 cups of coffee a day. 20% of U.S. adults consume more than 350 milligrams of caffeine per day. 3% of U.S. adults drink more than 650 milligrams of caffeine per day. 65% of, uh, of the 450 different soft drinks produced in the United States contain caffeine. Caffeine is used in several prescriptions and over-the-counter medications, in bronchodilators, decongestants, diuretics, analgesics, alertness aids, appetite suppressants, menstrual pain controllers, as a vasoconstrictor, it can work on migraine headaches. Caffeine works by inhibiting the effect of adenosine. Adenosine is a neuromodulator that depresses mood. It induces sleep. It has anticonvulsant properties. It causes low blood pressure, slows the heart rate, and dilates the blood vessels. Caffeine's effect is controlled by heredity. And I say that because my dad wasn't sensitive to caffeine. As it turned out, he wasn't sensitive to caffeine. He used to drink pot after pot of coffee every day, and he never had any uh, negative reaction to it, no tremors or anything. Uh, I'm the same way. I, uh, I drink a, a lot of caffeine, or, you know, I, it really doesn't matter whether I drink it or not. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went off of, uh, uh, I, I stopped drinking Mountain Dew for about a week because I ran out. <laughs> I ran out and, and and I thought, well, why not? Uh, and usually, you know, you get tremors and headaches and whatnot. I nothing. I didn't have any reaction at all to uh, going off caffeine. My son's the same way. He doesn't have any reaction to uh, caffeine. So, you know, cat. This is all controlled by heredity. I'm also not sensitive to, to opiates. Um, it takes twice as much Novocaine to knock knock out my my nerves in my face uh, so that they can do dental work on me. Uh, I'm just one of those really weird guys that uh, that uh, doesn't fit in the norm. I'm not normal. Uh, to those sensitive to caffeine, 350 milligrams per day may cause anxiety, insomnia, gastric irritation, high blood pressure, nervousness, and flushed face. One study where subjects were given 500 milligrams of coffee showed a 32% elevation of the stress hormones for an extended period of time. Caffeine is lethal at 10 grams, about 100 cups of coffee, or 185 cans of Mountain Dew. In susceptible people, too much caffeine can trigger nervousness. Caffeine is one of the substances that people prone to, to panic attacks should avoid. Counselors should ask their clients about their caffeine consumption as sensitivity and excess amounts might create artificial anxiety. And this is something uh, you as psychologists need to think about if you go into uh, counseling, uh, that uh, anxiety is sometimes caused by too much uh, coffee, too much ca uh, caffeine. Excess caffeine consumption can lower the fertility in women. 350 milligrams per day will not only make it less likely that a woman will get pregnant, but will double the chance of a miscarriage. Excessive uh, caffeine consumption has also been implicated in a woman's developing benign lumps in her breasts. Researchers also feel that caffeine may make it difficult to lose weight because caffeine triggers the release of insulin, which metabolizes sugar and in turn creates a deficit in the blood, which causes hunger. Since there are a number of different hereditary factors that dictate sensitivity and tolerance to caffeine, talking about amounts and effects varies from one individual to another. High caffeine consumers may actually get sleepy when only consuming small amounts of the substance because it activates the adenosine receptor sites. Withdrawal symptoms from caffeine begins after 12 to 24 hours of abstinence and peaks after 24 to 48 hours. 
The symptoms can last for two days to a week, dropping headaches, sleepiness, fatigue, lethargy, depression, decreased alertness, sleep problems, irritability, flu-like symptoms, nausea, vomiting, muscle pains, or stiffness. And as I said, I was off uh, caffeine for about a week. I uh, didn't have any of that stuff. So I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm a genetic uh, anomaly, I guess. Nicotine comes from the leaves of the tobacco plant. Uh, the tobacco plant is a member of the nightshade family, which also includes tomatoes, belladonna, henbane, and petunias. In the United States, 90% of the tobacco is delivered to its users as cigarettes. In India, 85% of all men use tobacco in the form of chewing tobacco. So in India, you see a lot of people spitting. Tobacco came to the old world from the, the Americas, and it originally was smoked in pipes. In the 18th century, people began chewing the leaves and snorting the powder into their noses as snuff. Smokeless tobacco continued to be the most popular use of tobacco until World War I. Around World War I, packaged cigarettes became popular in the trenches of Europe. This was possible because cigarette rolling machines improved. Cigarettes used a milder form of tobacco, which allowed deeper inhalation of the tobacco. Mass production produced lower prices. Advertising popularized the product. More aggressive marketing brought the product around the world. Heavy smokers in the United States will smoke 20 to 40 cigarettes per day. U.S. tobacco users spend $89 billion a year on tobacco products. 24.9% of the population, over 12, about 60.5 million Americans, smoked cigarettes in the past month. 51 million Americans smoke cigarettes every day. 13.6 uh, million Americans smoke cigars every day. 2.2 uh, million Americans smoke tobacco in pipes every day. 7.7 uh, million Americans use smokeless tobacco every day. Smokeless tobacco comes in three forms, moist snuff that is put in the mouth next to the gums, powdered or dry snuff, which is drawn up the nose, and loose leaf chew, which is put in uh, the mouth and chewed. Uh, moist snuff, uh, we talk about snuff, Copenhagen and whatnot, uh, but there is a substance called snus, which is uh, in a package form, uh, and you put it, uh, it's like snuff, but it's in a package, and it's a little bit stronger tobacco. And it's called snus. Um, I, I came in contact with this up in Montana. Um, snus is, is one of those substances uh, that is used in Scandinavia. And uh, because there are a lot of Scandinavians up in that area, or immigrants who, were, or, who are Scandinavian, uh, snus became a, is really popular up there. Um, I was talking to one of my students last semester and they are in the summer, and uh, they had an article about snus, and she'd never heard of it before. But this is a, a, is common uh, is common usage up in uh, Montana, as weird as that is. The active ingredient in tobacco is nicotine. Wait a second. Uh, smokeless tobacco. Uh, why does uh, snuff work? Uh, snuff has fiberglass in it, uh, along with the tobacco, and it cuts your gums. And that's how it gets into your system so fast. The active ingredient in tobacco is nicotine. Nicotine is highly poisonous alkaloid that is bitter, smelly, and colorless. Tobacco leaves hold 2 to 5% nicotine. Smoking tobacco delivers nicotine to the brain in 5 to 8 seconds. Smokeless tobacco delivers nicotine to the brain in 3 to 8 minutes. Cigarettes contain 10 milligrams of nicotine, but a typical smoker will only get one to three milligrams into their system with one cigarette. 70 milligrams of nicotine is fatal. So what's that? That means if you smoke that much tobacco, it may kill you. So what is that? Uh, seven cigarettes. If you smoked seven cigarettes and drew it all into your, into your system at the same time and nothing escaped, potentially you would kill yourself. Chewing tobacco will deliver 4.5 milligrams of nicotine to the brain, while snuff uh, will deliver 3.5 milligrams. Uh, the first cigarette of the day will raise the heart rate by 10 to 20 beats and the blood pressure by 5 to 10 units. Nicotine affects the central nervous system. 
and disrupts the following neurotransmitters, endorphins, epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, and acetylcholine. Nicotine mimics acetylcholine filling nicotinic acetylcholine receptor sites, exaggerating the cholinergic effects, increasing your heart rate, your blood pressure, memory, learning, reflexes, aggression, sleep, sexual activity, and mental acuity. Dopamine makes a smoker feel satisfied and calm. Thus, a cigarette both excites and tranquilizes at the same time. People continue to take in tobacco toxins because it is a social ritual. There is also a ritual aspect to the lighting up and smoking. Smoking is perceived as an adult activity. It manipulates your mood. It increases your dopamine level. It appears to be rebellious. It is sexually attractive. It controls appetite, leading to weight loss, and nicotine, of course, is craved. Nicotine suppresses the appetite and increases metabolism. The average smoker weighs six to nine pounds lighter than the same size non-smoker. It may be the fear of putting on weight that keeps some smokers from stopping. Uh, smokers may also be self-medicating to combat depression. Smokers are twice as likely as non-smokers to experience major depression. Smokers who have experienced at least one major episode of depression are less likely to su succeed in smoking secession. I needed a drink so I could say my S's. Nicotine creates an intense craving when a select level is not maintained in the bloodstream and the brain. The mere act of lighting up activates the nucleus accumbens, giving the smoker a sense of reward. The rush is similar to the feeling that a heroin user gets when they relapse after an abstinent period. This use to escape withdrawal symptoms is called negative drug reinforcement. Only a few hours of smoking leads to neural adaptation to the toxicity of the nicotine. The first morning hit after a long night's sleep is said to feel especially rush-like as the individual builds the nicotine level back to their daytime norm. Unlike other drugs, nicotine does not continue to build up a tolerance, but the smoker finds a level of comfort that they may attempt to maintain. Withdrawal from nicotine causes headaches, nervousness, fatigue, hunger, severe irritability, poor concentration, depression, increased appetite, sleep disturbances, intense nicotine craving. The individual has experienced a true physiological dependence as the individual has created an excess number of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that are screaming to be occupied. Without the nicotine to occupy these sites, the result is irritability and discontent. The smoker needs the tobacco to feel normal, Researchers now realize that the feelings of relaxation and well-being that smokers feel when they light up is actually the feeling of having the withdrawal symptoms subdued. Nicotine addiction is a more powerful addiction than any other. While 23 million people have tried cocaine, only 600,000 people are weekly users and a rare few on a daily basis. 72 million people have tried marijuana, but only 6.8 million use on a weekly basis and only a fraction on a daily basis. 198 million people have tried alcohol, but only 48 million use it weekly and only 20 million on a daily basis. 162 million people have tried tobacco, 60 million smoke weekly, and 37 million smoke daily. Nearly one quarter of the people who try tobacco continue to use the drug daily as compared to fractions with other drugs and 10% of the people using alcohol. 80% of smokers say they want to quit. 10% want to limit the amount they smoke. Only 10% of smokers want to continue, yet 100% do uh, continue to smoke or chew. Other countries have more serious problems with tobacco than the United States. China's use is 50% higher. England's use is 40% higher. Japan's use is 50% higher. Globally, 12% of women and 47% of men smoke. There may be a predilection for uh, use of tobacco. The DRD2A1 allele is seen as the culprit. A teen who smokes is three times more likely to abuse alcohol, eight times more likely to abuse marijuana, 22 times more likely to abuse cocaine, 
Only 8% of black teens use tobacco, 15.7% uh, of Hispanic teens use tobacco, 25.7% of white teens use tobacco. Nicotine contains from 4,000 to 48,000 uh, chemicals, 400 are toxins, 69 are known cancer-causing substances. Worldwide, it is estimated that smoking causes 5 million premature deaths per year. 392,000 uh, of these people are in the United States, 264,000 men and 178,000 women. Uh, they die from lung cancer, heart disease, and lung disease. An additional 50,000 people die from secondhand smoke. 8.6 million Americans have at least one serious illness caused by smoking. It is estimated that a smoker loses 10 years off their life. Smoking accelerates the process of atherosclerosis by increasing low-density fats, decrease, increasing uh, blood coagulability, uh, triggering cardiac arrhythmias, reducing micro-respiratory function by introducing carbon monoxide into the bloodstream. Uh, carbon monoxide has a 230 times affinity for, uh, for hemoglobin than does oxygen, 230 times. So if you are around carbon monoxide, it is going to get into your system, uh, and uh, it's going to get into your system before air will. Um, that's one of the reasons why uh, if you're in a room with a little bit of carbon dioxide, uh, monoxide and uh, oxygen, uh, you may die from carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, it is a vasoconstrictor. Uh, one third of all smoking deaths are due to cardiovascular disease. 35,000 of these are from secondhand smoke. Bronchopulmonary diseases are far more prevalent among smokers than non smokers. And this includes emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and COPD, which is uh, the acronym for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Children who live as smokers suffer from more asthma, more colds, and more bronchitis. 80 to 90 percent of uh, uh, people with uh, COPD are due, uh, the deaths are due to smoking. Men who smoke are 22 times more likely to develop <laughs> lung cancer than men who don't. Women who smoke are 12 times more likely to develop lung cancer than women who don't. 85% of men and 75% of women with lung cancer. Equality, women comprised only 26% of lung cancer deaths in 1979. In 2002, they had increased to 42.8% of deaths. The, okay, well, not, we won't really read that. About 15% of mothers smoke during pregnancy. Nicotine and the byproduct carbon monoxide change uh, some of the positive properties uh, in the blood. Carbon monoxide blocks oxygen transport. Nicotine makes platelets more sticky, increasing the possibility of a clot forming. Babies born to smokers have a lower birth weight. They have a higher incidence of SIDS. Women who smoke during pregnancy are twice as likely to miscarry and have spontaneous abortions as non-smokers. Children whose mothers uh, smoke during pregnancy have a four times greater chance of having ADHD, conduct disorder, drug dependence, asthma, chronic bronchitis, chronic respiratory symptoms. Smokeless tobacco can be as addicting as smoking because tobacco and smokeless tobacco forms uh, contain more nicotine than smoked tobacco. People use more smokeless tobacco than they use. Smokeless tobacco has a higher pH, allowing it to pass into the capillaries more readily. One dip of smokeless tobacco delivers the same amount of nicotine as three to four cigarettes. At least the dipper is less likely to get lung cancer. Gums are inflamed from use, uh, use causing more dental problems. Higher risk of oral cancer, pharyngeal cancer, esophageal cancer, cheek cancer, and gum cancer. A famous singer of the 50s, uh, Nat King Cole, was one of the first African-American TV stars. He was a heavy smoker. Nat King Cole died of lung cancer at age 45. This is the, uh, the reality. I can remember Nat King Cole when he was still alive and singing, of course. Um, this was the reality. I, I used to read the uh, obituaries, and I used to see these people dying of lung cancer in, in their 40s and 50s, something that you don't see nearly as much today. 
a leading man of the 60s and 70s, Steve McQueen starred in uh, such uh, movies as The Great Escape, The Sand Pebbles, a heavy smoker all his life. McQueen died of lung cancer at age 50. 45, 50. One of the blonde bombshells of the 40s and 50s, uh, Betty Grable was a famous pinup for World War II soldiers. They liked her sexy legs. This is the pinup. Uh, you can see her legs. I'm not exactly... I'm not a leg man. A uh, smoker to keep her figure, Gable died, uh, Grable died of uh, lung cancer at age 56. Known for his raspy voice and tough guy image, uh, Humphrey Bogart starred in films in the 40s and 50s in such films as Casablanca and The Maltese Falcon, which I saw just a couple nights ago. His heavy smoking caught up with him in 1956 when he died of lung cancer at age 57. Known as the youngest Beatle, uh, George Harrison was the first to die, naturally, at 58 from lung cancer. Uh, John Lennon was murdered in 1980. Harrison was a smoker and toker most of his life, smoked a lot of pot and uh, cigarettes. The benefits of quitting smoking, uh, quitting using tobacco, 20 minutes after quitting, blood pressure and pulse rate drop and the feet and hands warm to normal temperatures. Within eight hours, the carbon monoxide level in the blood drops and oxygen levels increase both to normal levels. Within 24 hours, the risk of sudden heart attack decreases. Within 48 hours, the nerve endings adjust to the absence of nicotine while the sense of taste and smell return. Within one week, breathing improves and constricted blood vessels begin to relax. Within 2 to 12 weeks, circulation improves, lung function increases up to 30%, and the complexion begins looking uh, healthy again. And this is what a... Oh, this is a smoker. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have... Wait a second. Uh, this is the smoker. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a smoker, and this is a lady that's not sm smoking. So you can see the difference. This is a twin. One was a smoker, and one wasn't. <clears throat> Within uh, one to nine months, fatigue, uh, uh, coughing, sinus congestion, and shortness of breath decreases, and lungs increase their ability to handle mucus. Within one year, the risk of coronary heart disease has been cut in half. Within five years, the heart disease rate has become that of a non-smoker. Within 10 years, the lung cancer rate drops to just above that of a non-smoker. Within 10 to 15 years, the disease rate has returned to that of a non-smoker. I had a heart attack in 2010. Uh, I had a friend uh, who, uh, he was a smoker. We had exactly the same heart attack in exactly the same place. Uh, I had 93% uh, uh, occlusion and he had 83% occlusion. Uh, he died right away. He was a smoker. Uh, I didn't, obviously, since I'm here. Um, uh, no, I, I, I live a healthier lifestyle. So I was able to, to uh, survive uh, with no damage to my heart, uh, as weird as that may seem. And uh, not only did he uh, suffer uh, severe damage to his heart, but he died. I, he never regained consciousness. And he had more uh, uh, blood flow than I did, uh, but it was because you know I'm I have a healthy lifestyle, and he was a smoker, and he, he's dead, and I'm not. He's been dead for seven years now, and that's the end of the chapter. So there you go. I'll talk to you guys next week, maybe not next week. Well, we'll see. Anyway, that was that was the amphetamines. Why aren't they fun? Uh, or the uppers? Uh, so we'll talk about something else next week.